So as you work through your emotion, can you have a relationship with that terminated soul? Yeah, that's a good question. Look, look, let me explain what happens with this terminated soul and your relationship with it. When, when this child, let's, go, let's say it's a female child, so let's say it's a little daughter. Let's say the daughter goes into summer land and for a year or two you were just totally detuned from what you've done as a mother. Well, during that time, the celestial spirit will never bring the child to you, even in the sleep state. And the reason why that's the case is because the child itself will be confronted with this person who didn't want them. And that's quite a damaging emotion to be confronted with constantly. And so what the celestial spirit does is nurture the child in an environment where it's wanted. Now, as soon as you start working through your guilt-based emotions and, your, and the, you know, what, what you've done in terms of uh, an abortion, what happens is you start feeling feelings for the child that you're aborted, generally. And sometimes you will start, and many times, you will start feeling feelings of love for the child. And now once that starts occurring, the celestial spirit will usually encourage that relationship. And allow that, you know, and allow that relationship to develop. So you'll um, you'll meet each other in the sleep state. You'll start meeting each other in the sleep state, and you'll start developing a relationship in the sleep state. And by the time you pass, you you know you'll be out, you'll meet them generally, and spend a lot of time with them probably. Yeah. And so forgiveness, and it will be forgiven. Yeah, the the child itself has no issue usually with forgiveness in the end. It's to do with the fact that you've broken God's laws. And what actually happens inside of you when you break God's laws is there's a penalty automatically on your soul. It's like throwing mud at yourself, if you like. So every time you break a law of God, nobody else but you gets mud thrown at you from you, if that makes sense. And so, so the, the impurities of your own soul are created by your own choices and actions. And so, obviously... Anything that you need to work through is based upon your own state, not on what they would think of you. But all of the children who are aborted, and there's, no, there's over 50 million of them every year, um, aborted. So all of those children are aborted, there's a lot. You can imagine in the spirit world how much work that creates. Uh, there's actually huge, huge locations in the spirit world where these children are looked after. And it creates a huge amount of work for people in the spirit world, which of course they love doing, uh, because it's all part of loving, loving each soul. Um, those children, as they grow, are not forced to follow the divine love path. They are actually offered, just like you are being offered, the path in conjunction with the natural love path. And many of them choose the natural love path rather than following the divine love path, and then some choose the divine love path. It just depends. Many of them do choose the divine love path, and in fact, the majority do choose or finish up choosing the divine love path because it enables them to remain children. And uh, whereas the natural love path usually encourages everyone to grow up and act your age, right? <laughs> uh, whereas the divine love path doesn't do that. So, so in the case of many children who die who are on the divine love path, many times when you see them, if they still have their spirit bodies, their spirit bodies will still be young. Um, even though they may be highly developed, I'm going to say highly developed, in the celestial spheres above the eighth sphere, but they'll be highly developed, and they'll know far more than what you know here on Earth, um, and, yet, and yet they look young. They may portray themselves as old when they communicate with you, because here on Earth we have a lot of stuff about age, don't we? Like, you know, if someone's younger than you, <coughs> excuse me, it makes it a lot harder to listen to them, generally. <coughs> and so, so if it makes it a lot harder to listen to them, generally what the spirit will do is they'll make themselves look older than what they really are, so that you listen to them. And that's a common thing that happens when they portray an image to you of, of their own, uh, you know, shape or size and, and, and their looks. Hey, AJ, what happens to the soul mate of the aborted spirit? Is it doomed to? And it's the same thing that would happen to the soul made of any other person who passes, and that is nothing. Uh, when I say nothing, of course there is a soul link between the two halves of the soul, but in terms of death, death doesn't impact generally the other half of the soul unless it's conscious of the soul mate generally. 
and so so the other half of the soul may live 80 years and then pass. But but the problem is is they never have the opportunity of meeting their soulmate on earth, which is a sad thing as well. You see, when when we abort a child, because we don't know the truth, we don't understand all of the impacts it's having on not just our own life, but the life of that child and the life of its soulmate and a lot of other things that are not considered. And, and so this is part of the law of compensation when we, when we do damage to other souls. We're often not understanding what the impact is of, the, of those actions. And it's very important to understand the, the impact of all of the actions that we do.